Healing spells in Dungeons & Dragons have always sat in a little bit of an awkward place. On the one hand, they are critical to the fantasy of the game, and I would almost say core to its functionality. I think it would be really weird if they just didn't exist, but at the same time, the tuning of their power level is incredibly difficult to pin down. If they're too good, you can trivialize many aspects of the game experience as a whole, and if they aren't good enough, well then why bother even having them in the game at all, since they would just exist as traps for players to fall into. And I'm of the mind that designing a game and setting your players up for failure just isn't the best approach to design. As far as 5th edition is concerned though, I think the team has actually done an okay job at appropriately weighing the value of healing against its overall importance in the game, depending on what tier of player in at least. Between the two extremes that I mentioned earlier, healing definitely falls closer to the not good enough end of the spectrum, but really only in certain circumstances. I've made videos about healing and combat in the past, and the impact that the so-called yo-yo of healing has on the game. Check out the full video if you haven't seen it already, but the thing is, there is more to healing than just in-combat healing. So let's talk about the different types, the way that they manifest in the game, and what these revised healing spells are actually trying to accomplish. Really quick, the end of the year is fast approaching and I'm still hoping to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of December, so if you like what I do and want to help support me, a sub to the channel would be amazing. Thank you so much. Firstly, when it comes to out-of-combat healing, it's largely fine. There's no shortage of ways to heal characters in 5th edition. Whether that's through short or long resting, spells like Prayer of Healing and Aura of Vitality, or honestly, even just class features like Second Wind, healing isn't particularly hard to come by in the game. Its efficiency and effectiveness can widely vary, which has no doubt led to many of the spell revisions that we're seeing in this latest UA. In any case though, it still isn't perfect, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but out-of-combat healing is in a reasonably good spot in the game. What's far more complicated is the healing situation as it pertains to in-combat healing. There's a few different design reasons that this does create a challenge, but I'll be honest, despite some of the criticisms that I'm about to share, I genuinely do believe that the team has done a fairly good job of understanding the pitfalls of leaning too heavily in one direction over another, and have created a healing system that, while far from perfect, is certainly functional. Before we can talk about the design issues that in-combat healing presents, it's important to know where we stand right now. In-combat healing in 5th edition is designed in such a way that it is not the most effective thing that you can do on your turn. This is intentional. They almost want healing to feel frantic and ineffective. Again, this is by design. There's a reason they decided to make consuming a potion take your full action and not just a bonus action. They wanted to ensure that you as a player felt like there was some sort of trade-off. If you heal, you're not going to be casting fireball or making multiple attacks or dashing up to your enemy. They wanted to make sure that healing while in combat feels like it has a real opportunity cost. It's actually a pretty brilliant psychological move. As humans, our dumb lizard brains are trained to perceive things that we believe to be good as even more gooder when scarcity becomes involved. The more restricted that good thing is, the better it becomes. This, in essence, is the healing economy in 5e. Despite the fact that healing isn't actually that great, as we'll discuss in a little bit, it feels like it is because its resource is equivalent to that of casting spells or making attacks. This again is part of why Healing Word feels and is so disproportionately good, but like I said, we'll get to all that. In most circumstances, healing while in combat is almost a trap. To be clear though, there are absolutely plenty of situations where healing is the quote-unquote correct thing to do, but these are situational. The Coles notes on why healing is kind of a trap in 5e is that in most cases, you're just not going to be out healing the incoming damage. This will obviously vary from encounter to encounter, and also largely depends on what tier of play that you're in, and whether you're fighting in a small skirmish or a boss fight, but this is a generally accepted axiom. Tree and Muck released a video on this topic recently, as I was scripting this video, where he talks about it in great detail. I'll leave a link in the description below. Essentially though, the idea is that if you can heal a target for an average of something like 10 to 20 hit points on your turn, if the creature that's about to attack your ally is dealing 25 average damage, there was no functional difference between healing them for 1 hit point or 20. They're still just gonna go down, and this is where we introduce the first major design consideration for healing in combat, the dedicated healer. 
Like I mentioned earlier, there's a few reasons why in combat healing functions the way that it does in 5th edition, and I think the concept of the dedicated healer is a major one that is often overlooked during these discussions. When designing healing for combat, really careful attention has to be paid to how effective and how easy it is to execute. If healing is incredibly effective, you can run the risk of two things happening. Trivializing combat since risk becomes negligible when you can always outheal any danger, and secondly, the creation of the dedicated healer. I want to be clear that I'm not necessarily saying that having a role-specific healer is always a bad thing, but the existence of that type of role in the game is reflective of its overall design, and it seems clear that Wizards of the Coast wanted to avoid one member of your party being relegated to keeping everyone else alive. Whether that's because they deem it to be not fun, or if it's just not the type of experience that they want to create is anyone's guess, really. From where I'm sitting though, I like that having a dedicated healer just does not feel like a requirement in 5e. Sure, most parties will have that cleric or druid that is significantly more proficient in healing than everyone else is, but because it's not a requirement, it makes it so that these characters have more depth of choice on what they can do on their turns. They don't need to spend every turn keeping your fighter alive, but similarly and equally as valuably, they don't need to spend every turn always attacking either there's more room for nuance to their turns. While I'm sure that there are some players that are totally happy to be the party healer, I can't help but feel like I would get a little bit bored of it after a while. And I almost always end up playing a support class or builds in other games, so it's not like I hate just not attacking, and I'm sure that I'm not alone in that sentiment. Forcing a player into the healer role removes an element of agency and almost always predetermines their turns, and that just doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. Again, I know that this can work in certain groups and with the right people, I just happen to agree with the design decision to shy away from it. But no good deed goes unpunished, almost as a direct result of tuning in combat healing down to avoid the necessity of a party healer, we end up with the death yo-yo mentioned earlier, which is the second design consideration. Again, I've made a whole video about this so I won't spend a ton of time on it. The idea here is that since your character is just as effective whether they have 1 hit point or 100 hit points, and there's not necessarily an immediate penalty to falling unconscious, and because initiative, as written, makes things very predictable, healing becomes nearly irrelevant. You're almost always better off just letting your party member drop and very slightly healing them later, and just spending your turns attacking the thing so it dies faster, and then tend to your downed party member after combat ends, since out of combat healing is way more efficient anyway. This is where the power of spells like Healing Word really shine. Since it's a bonus action to cast, you don't have nearly the same degree of trade-off as you would with a one-action heal like Cure Wounds, for example. A lot of this does kind of shift when you get to the very high tiers of play if you have a Life Cleric who can heal everyone for like a billion on every round, but we're obviously not talking about that. I think it's with all of this in mind that we arrive at the healing spell revisions that we've got here in UA8. In the overview video, Jeremy Crawford explained that it was their intention to actually make it feel more worthwhile to cast healing spells during combat, and I also agree with this notion. Even though I do think that having slightly down-tuned in-combat healing is overall healthier for the game, I do still recognize that there is a good amount of space between where it is now and where it becomes problematic, and it seems like the design team feels the same way. Right now, you're almost always better off either attacking or helping prevent the damage outright. Healing is rarely the right answer. But if they're able to thread that needle enough to where healing can become more of a viable option more of the time, it also can help increase the depth of choice for nearly all characters, which I view as a good thing. So finally, let's talk about the updated healing spells in UA8. First up is Cure Wounds, and basically they took the healing and doubled it. Almost. Everything else about the spell is the same, with the exception of it now being a School of Abjuration spell rather than an Evocation one. The healing offered by it now is 2d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. This is why I say they almost doubled it, since your spellcasting modifier obviously isn't also doubled here. In any case though, this is a really solid buff. It increases the average healing of the spell by somewhere in the region of 60 to 70%, which is really, really good when you consider that it doesn't cost any more resources than it used to. Cure Wounds was always a little bit of a challenging spell to justify casting during combat. The range of touch made it way more potentially difficult to execute, and the additional healing over something like Healing Word just rarely, if ever, felt justified. Now though, this might just be enough, especially when we consider upcasting. Upcasting Cure Wounds now increases the healing by 2d per spell level above first, rather than 1d8. This is a straight doubling, and it makes it feel way more potent and much more worthy of a higher level spell slot, especially before you have access to bigger spells like heal. 
Suffice it to say that the new Cure Wounds is a really nice improvement over its predecessor while still living in the same design constraints that the team established for themselves that we discussed earlier. I think what's really interesting to me is that while, depending on the encounter, a first level cast of the spell is still unlikely to yield enough healing to escape any incoming damage, but they've made it so that upcasting it, maybe even by just one level, might be enough, and that is a really big deal that shouldn't be understated. Prior to this change, in order to get 4 to 8 plus spellcasting modifier healing out of Cure Wounds, you'd need to expend a 4th level spell slot. That's something that basically never felt worth it, which heavily contributed to the whole yo-yo situation. The cost was just way too high to justify the reward, but now that same amount of healing can be achieved through just a 2nd level spell slot, and that is way more attractive. Yes, it's still costing a more valuable resource, but spending a second level slot is much more likely to feel worth it to keep people up and running than a fourth or fifth level slot ever would have been. I'm really happy with the changes to Cure Wounds, and I think that they've done a great job making it feel more powerful and useful and like a genuine consideration without wrecking the design that they've already created. The new version of Healing Word, on the other hand, I'm equally as excited about actually. Healing Word has received the exact same treatment as Cure Wounds. Everything is the same, they've just doubled the dice and made it an abjuration spell. It now heals for 2d4 plus your spellcasting ability modifier at first level, and when upcast it heals for an additional 2d4 per slot level above first. Now, Healing Word has a bit of a reputation for being one of the most obnoxious and broken spells in the game. Not because what it does is overpowered, but mostly because it allows players to abuse, I'm using air quotes, the design of the game to keep their party up while minimizing the resource cost. I guess it's more like leveraging the design, really. This spell is often cited as the biggest culprit of the whole death yo-yo thing, and for good reason. With a 60-foot range and the ability to be cast as a bonus action, the amount of healing being small doesn't really matter, since, as we discussed, there isn't necessarily much of a difference between 1 and 20 in a lot of situations, but not all. All that being said, I don't think that this buff to the spell is actually problematic at all, and I don't think it exacerbates any of the issues that already existed with it either, and in fact, I think it makes it much more likely to be used outside of the scenario of the yo-yo. Hear me out. Your fighter's on the front line and is running low on their hit points, maybe they're at like 20. The creature attacking them can deal an average of 25 damage on a successful hit. Before, casting Healing Word probably just wasn't worth it since there's a very real chance that you won't actually heal them enough to bring them out of range of being downed anyway, so you just let it go, take your turn, and cast Healing Word once they inevitably fall unconscious, thus enabling the yo-yo. Now though, it's much more likely that you will heal them out of range, or at least feel like it's much more likely, so you're willing to take that chance on the spell, thus helping to nullify the yo-yo, potentially keeping your party member up, and you also made a meaningful decision. This has the potential to be a great just-in-case heal, and doesn't leave the person casting the spell without the use of their action either. I'm casting the spell though, that doesn't really feel great, but I really feel like the buff to healing word solidifies so many of the design decisions that we've talked about, and I love it. The final two healing spells in this UA are Mass Cure Wounds and Mass Healing Word. I'll cover them together since I largely have the same things to say about them. Again, everything is the same with these spells as their 2014 counterparts, except that they now heal for slightly more on average. Mass Cure Wounds went from 3d8 plus your spellcasting modifier to 5d8 plus your spellcasting modifier, and Mass Healing Word went from 1d4 plus spellcasting to 2d4 plus spellcasting. Both of these changes feel good, if slightly underwhelming. Neither got improvements to upcasting, and Mass Cure Wounds didn't even get the same double the dice treatment that all of the others did. Both spells are unquestionably better than their versions from 2014, but I guess the big questions now are how much better, and do they help solidify the design of combat in 5th edition? Mass Healing word feels like it's only really good for a very brief moment of time before you get access to higher level spells. With no bonus to his upcasting, it's hard to even say if it's a better healing word. Yes, you can obviously heal more targets, but that in itself is not always that common of a necessity. Mass Cure Wounds seems better, it's essentially the same as casting the 2014 version at 7th level. Not that you would have ever done that anyway, so in that sense it feels like a nice bonus? Both spells aid in making healing feel more viable, but I am worried that they still might fall into the trap territory as they may not have crossed that line of being good enough to consider, but not too good that they're just an obvious choice. I'm certainly happy to see them improve though, but I'll definitely need to play with them before I can truly render an opinion. In their defense though, mass healing spells are definitely much more difficult to balance since it's substantially easier for things to get out of hand way too quickly. The changes to the 1 D&D healing spells, particularly Cure Wounds and Healing Word, feel really well executed to me. 
They help push healing in combat as something that feels potentially worth your action, rather than a waste of your action, and incentivize actually considering upcasting the spells to get better value, something that almost never happened before. The mass versions of these spells are undeniably trickier to pin down, but I really appreciate the effort and recognition that something had to give here. It's clear that the team recognized that there was still space to work with without compromising the design decisions that they've already made, and I think these updates are a great step in the right direction. Action. If you like what I do and would like to help me reach that goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other 1D&D videos, but otherwise, take care.